Welcome to the show. This is your host, David Yenes, and of course, we're still here at the NRB, and we have our last interview for the day, so this is a last, special, this is last, a special one. I'm the last guy? <laughs> well, you know what? You were actually scheduled a little earlier, but we're running behind. <laughs> so, you know, you have real good publicists. She kept moving you around on the on the schedule for us. As we, she goes, best. take the next one, take the next one. We, and, you, you know, it's fine. We don't mind. We, we're we're going to end strong, and, aren't we? And Yeah, and it, and it worked out perfectly because it's the last one, and you're just ready. I'm so, ready. And, Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you. God Great to be you. here. And before we jump into your project that you have and the movie that you've made, tell us a little bit about yourself. How, how did you get started working with um, with uh, foster kids, but also who you are? Who are you? Oh, boy. I, um, I grew up in San Diego. I went to Moody Bible Institute in Chicago and Wheaton Graduate School in Wheaton. I joined Youth for Christ when I was 20, 22 and uh, worked with Youth for Christ for 30 years. And wow. while I was doing that for 30 years, I was their senior vice president. I uh, was an interim at different churches as their pastor, so I loved doing that on Sundays. Um, flew around the world and across the country speaking, and out of that, most my style of speaker was mostly uh, parables and metaphors yeah. and illustrations. <laughs> I found, I, I tried to speak in terms of pictures and I had some, a friend turn one of my illustrations into a movie in 1988 that became very popular. And that got me doing films about every three years for Wasn't high school kids without reservation. Okay. You, I can tell you didn't even no, know. Didn't you, even know. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say, really? <laughs> well, I was trying to see if it's something I do. <laughs> I'm honest. No, right? I'm honest. <laughs> I, love, I love the honesty. It hurts, but I love the honesty. No. I'll Google uh, it. No, do, okay. do. You know, in fact, here's the fun side. Group Magazine named it the number one youth film ever made so okay. uh, it was it turned out real good right. it, was, it was had little to do with me other than the story and then started doing more and more films okay um during that season in 82 my wife and i decided to take in foster kids okay. and so we took in foster kids and discovered the pain of their story really was motivated by james who says you know pure religion is to keep oneself from staying from the world and and to take care of the widows and the orphans in their distress. So we thought, let's integrate that into our family life, took in foster children. About five years into the story, uh, they brought us a child named Emery that was born without a brain, just a small enough uh, brain on the top of his spinal cord that allowed him to suck. He, he was wow. blind, deaf, on oxygen. We had a big oxygen tank in our room. He came, they said he'd live a, uh, live a week. And uh, so we had to meet at the hospital and sat at a big table with 12, 15 okay. doctors and nurses, did a no resuscitation, kind of a complicated thing. Yeah. He lived eight months at our home. Wow. And they felt like why he did was the love that was there. So my mm. wife, my kids, we hugged them, we talked to them, we uh, kissed them, we took mm. them to That's restaurants, amazing. took That's oxygen amazing. tanks with us. Wow. Uh, but it was really my wife's doing. As a result of that, they started bringing us kids that were in certain situations. So we, they, were, they brought us Nick's, a little girl that had been dropped on her head. Mm. And, uh, and um, we took her in a year later. They asked us to adopt her. We did, and now she's 19 and our daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so foster care has always been a part. And then in the summers, I'd take my kids overseas, and we'd go to orphanages okay. in Eastern Europe, Bangladesh. All right. and had a ministry there. So out of that, we really did it so that our kids could see our faith lived out, not just how we talked about it. but Absolutely. And um, But it's all my wife's doing. The Amen. truth is I probably wouldn't have done it, but she, she has the gift of mercy wow. and hospitality, and, and that's, that's how it started. That's, that's awesome. Now tell us about your mission in media. What is your mission? My goal? Yeah. Oh, boy, that's a great question. My goal... Um, not in a priority. Number one is to elevate Jesus and God the Father in the marketplace of life. In ministry, as you have yeah. been, you know, church talks about God, but in the marketplace, you don't hear much about God. Yeah, that's and true. so I find that there's a lot of kids that don't even consider the element of God creator because they've grown up in a world without him. And so I would want to elevate the fact that there is a God in love with us in the marketplace of life, in the theater. That's one. Two, uh, this film is designed to get parents on the way home talking to their kids about God's love. All and right. it's my dream that on the way home, mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, 
would on the way home begin a conversation with their kid about the theme of the movie. You know, do you believe that God loves you? Do you believe in a God? Do you believe in God loved you so much he sent his son? And so our second goal is to create a movie that affirms our identity is an inside out. It's not our labels, it's not our clothes. It starts on the inside of who we are and that's implanted by God and we don't have to question that. See, a lot of kids question their identity and their worth. Yeah, that's true. And they feel invisible and they're picked on. And I, and I would hope as a result of this movie that kids would leave there and say, you know what, I don't care what you say about me and I don't care what I'm wearing today. I have value because God created me. Amen. And because of his creating me, I'm going to treat you with love and kindness even though that you don't understand either of those two words. So that would be the second goal. And third goal is that we could just influence the culture more positively. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Now tell us about your new movie. The Lost Medallion. It's a 90-minute feature. just got released Friday. Okay. We, um, uh, we had a great weekend. We're on 60 screens, and we're hoping to expand theaters are interested in movies based on ticket sales. That's all they that's care true. about. That's, that's, that's their it's, world. That's it. And so our goal is that Christians would go to the, see this movie, that parents would take their kids, grandparents would take their grandkids, parents would take their kids and their friends, Sunday school teachers. And it's our dream, A, that ministry will happen on the way home, but B, that theaters and studios would say, you know what, Christians do want a certain kind yeah, of film. They do. And, and studios and theaters uh, respond to ticket sales and That's so true. if we can get people to go see the lost medallion then there'll be room for other christian films in the theater if they if christians don't go see this kind of a film then theaters will put in the other stuff they've already been putting in now have you seen the distribution change since you started in the 80s and stuff yeah um it's always been difficult to get into a theatrical release. It's a very expensive proposition. You for know, Christian like, or any, any for film. anybody. Okay. So you you take we're up against Jack of the Giant Slayer that <laughs> they spent two hundred yeah. million dollars yeah. on the movie. Probably spent a hundred million on marketing. Wow. We have a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, so I they understand. Can, <laughs> they can put a lot of TV ads, uh, but we're counting on the Christian community getting the word out. But the main. Getting into theaters is a very expensive proposition, and, and we have a team of people that want to create new ways to allow faith films to come into the theater that don't take $10 that's million a, that's to get That's important. That's important. You look at all the stuff that's out there, and that's the only bridge that hasn't been broken yet, that, that for faith movies. Um, we can produce them. We can put together great radio shows and TV shows, right. but the, the industry is still holding that little doorway closed and god can break that open but it takes a team of us to, it to figure it out i'm into movies I, my heart is to make movies now i've done radio to broadcast. you want to be a movie star oh no come on producer what, director produ okay all right <laughs> writer and that's what i like but uh but you see this out there and i'm, I'm I, I love the pioneer i love the guys that stuck with it that kept the christian genre running out there the faith films and and that's 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 you know to us to me, those are those are the heroes of our industry there because it's it's those things that need to be put out there, like your movie you made, and, and it's amazing. Tell us about the cast. This is a special cast. Tell us about the cast you have. Well, everybody. Well, most people know Alex Kendrick of Courageous and Fireproof yes. is in this movie. Alex graciously graciously came into this project. We have Billy Unger, who's the number one star on the Disney Channel Boys Channel. Okay. Sammy Henretti did an incredible job as a girl we have james hong who's been in movies since chinatown in the early 70s we got mark demarcus who is a the iron chef okay uh, most moms think he's beautiful including my wife is that and the so, one that says a la cuisine yeah i think yeah. so and so most yeah you know, wife, we, he's on hawaii 502 he's on a wife yeah. and, and yeah. uh, so we put him in there my, my wife referred to him as uh, eye candy oh. so we, we you yeah know, that's mom, what, I my, what you my know, wife would say <laughs> So it's, we have a great cast, very gracious. We feel the performances are thought to be stellar, and, and it was a great team of people. Amen. Now, what's the theme of the show? What's the theme of the movie? What, what, do, you, what do you want people to get when they, when they go, they finished, watched it, they came home, they're in the car with mom and dad? Oh, that's, that's a great question. I want, I want kids to leave the theater and realize they're not mistakes, mm. and they're not insignificant, that's and that powerful. their identity is found in a God who created them and wants a relationship with them. I, the movie doesn't cover the gospel because we really left that to Sunday school teachers and parents on the way home. Uh, we want that conversation to go past that yeah. a movie. We want it to happen each night. In fact, I just got an email from a father who watched the movie 
uh, and and wrote in an email to me. It was the first. He said shamefully, it was the first conversation he's had with his kids about spiritual things, mm. and was able to use the film to begin a conversation to his two boys and his daughter about wow. who God was and Jesus' death, and found a closeness happen in that family based on that conversation. Wow, that's amazing. we got about one minute left. I want you to encourage Christian filmmakers out there and, and tell them, you know, just tell them what you want to tell them. got a minute. Boy, here's what I would say. Uh, learn how to tell a story. Learn how to tell a story that's powerful. You're only as good as your story. Uh, the journey of making a movie requires perseverance. Mm. Uh, persevere through it. Make your story redemptive. Make sure your hero somewhere in that story um, has failure and overcomes failure. Um, learn the art. Read every book you can. Um, you can find other brothers and sisters in the industry. Iron sharpens iron. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. And uh, believe in your mission so deeply that you persevere to the very end. Amen. That encourages me. I As, appreciate that. Thank okay. You. I, and when is your movie coming out? This year sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look I'm, for I'm it. I'm a go-getter. All I'll, right. I'll start it this week. Okay. I don't know if we finish this year. So at least I get, you know, I got to put right. the story. You got to write it. Got to write it. Get the story in the story. can and, yep. and then go from there. Thank you so much for taking the time and, and being with us. And uh, your, your uh, interview is going to go to the top of the list because your movie's out. we got to get the interview out so Good. people can get to the theater. Yeah, we need them to. It, it'll be a part of... of I think we can make the we can make the culture a kinder, more loving, more Amen. significant place. And and I thank you for the kind of ministry that you're having in people's lives through your radio and television and thank getting you. getting our story out. Amen. And thanks for doing that. Amen. We, you know, I always found out that if you're focused on being a blessing, you never have to worry about a blessing. <laughs> it's always going to be there. If you bless others, God will bless back. Yeah. A good friend told me that one day. Amen. God bless you. Thanks again for hey, being on the show. Hey, thank you for the time. Amen. And uh, that's, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> that's it for today.